The object didn't slow down. That's what terrified us first. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me if you've noticed anything unusual in the night sky recently. NASA isn't asking this lightly. There's a reason we need to know where people are watching from. Trust me on this. My name is Michio Kaku, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. For decades, I've stood at the forefront of theoretical physics, exploring the boundaries of string theory, parallel universes, and the mathematical frameworks that govern reality itself. I've spent my life asking questions that most would consider unsettling. Are we alone? What lies beyond the cosmic horizon? And perhaps most importantly, are we being watched? But nothing in my career, nothing in the entire breadth of human scientific achievement prepared me for what happened when 3i Atlas transmitted its final message. And I do mean final, because what it sent wasn't a greeting, it was coordinates. Coordinates pointing directly at Earth's core. Let me take you back to the beginning, to the moment when everything we thought we understood about our cosmic neighborhood began to unravel. It was August of 2019 when the Atlas Survey Telescope in Hawaii first detected the object. At the time, it appeared to be nothing more than another interstellar visitor, much like Oumuamua before it, a wanderer from the depths of space passing through our solar system on its way to nowhere in particular. We cataloged it. We measured its trajectory. We calculated its velocity and composition. The scientific community barely took notice. After all, we'd seen this before, or so we thought. But 3i Atlas was different from the very beginning, and it took us far too long to realize why. The designation itself should have been our first clue. 3i stands for Interstellar Interloper, the third confirmed object from beyond our solar system to grace us with its presence. Atlas, named after the survey that discovered it, seemed unremarkable in the initial data. A comet, we said. An icy body ejected from some distant star system, tumbling through the void for millions of years before crossing our path. We were so confident in this assessment that most researchers moved on on to other projects within weeks. But there were anomalies, small things at first, deviations in its brightness that didn't match standard cometary behavior, spectroscopic signatures that suggested a composition unlike anything we'd cataloged from interstellar space. And then there was its trajectory, that troubling, inexplicable trajectory that seemed to adjust itself with a precision that natural gravitational interactions couldn't fully explain. I remember the day Dr. Elena Petrova from the European Space Agency called me. It was late past midnight my time, and her voice carried a tremor I'd never heard from her before. Elena was one of the most composed scientists I knew, a woman who'd spent 20 years analyzing celestial mechanics without ever losing losing her cool. But that night, something had shaken her. Michio, she said, we need to talk about 3i Atlas. Off the record. Off the record. Those words sent a chill through me because Elena didn't do off the record. She was a by-the-book researcher who published everything through proper channels. If she was calling me privately, something was deeply wrong. She sent me the data over an encrypted channel. What I saw on my screen that night still haunts my sleep. The object had altered its velocity 17 times over the course of six months. 17 distinct course corrections, each one perfectly timed to keep it within optimal observational range of Earth while simultaneously avoiding close approaches to other planetary bodies. This wasn't gravitational assist. This wasn't outgassing from a cometary nucleus. This was maneuvering. The object was under intelligent control. Control. We convened a classified meeting, a small group of researchers who could be trusted to analyze the data without causing public panic. Representatives from NASA, the ESA, SETI, and several theoretical physicists like myself gathered via secure video conference. For three hours, we examined every alternative explanation we could conceive solar radiation pressure, magnetic field interactions, previously unknown physical phenomena. We grasped at every conventional straw we could find because the alternative was too profound to accept without absolute certainty. But the mathematics didn't lie. 3i Atlas was adjusting its path with purpose, and that purpose appeared to be Earth observation. It was studying us. Then came the transmission. It happened on a Tuesday morning, February 18th, 2025, at 417 UTC. 
radio telescopes across the globe simultaneously detected a burst of organized electromagnetic radiation emanating from the exact position of 3I Atlas. The signal lasted for exactly 11 minutes and 42 seconds. It repeated three times, then ceased entirely. Since that moment, the object has been completely silent, hurtling away from our solar system at an accelerating rate that defies our understanding of propulsion physics. The the signal itself was unlike anything SETI had ever cataloged. It wasn't a simple repeating pattern or mathematical sequence, the kind of hello we exist message we'd always imagine first contact might entail. This was dense, layered, extraordinarily complex. Embedded within the transmission were multiple levels of information encoding, suggesting a civilization with computational capabilities that make our most advanced artificial intelligence look like an abacus. But here's what terrified us. Buried within that impossibly sophisticated data stream were coordinates. Precise three-dimensional spatial coordinates using a reference framework based on pulsar triangulation, a method that any sufficiently advanced civilization would recognize as universal. And those coordinates pointed to a specific location approximately 6,371 kilometers beneath our feet. The center of the Earth, not the surface, not a particular city or landmark or geographic feature, the core, the molten, unreachable heart of our planet. I sat in the analysis room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory with 12 other scientists when we finally decoded this portion of the message. Nobody spoke for what felt like an eternity. We all understood the implication immediately, even if we couldn't yet comprehend the meaning. An extraterrestrial intelligence had traveled across interstellar space, positioned itself to study Earth, and then transmitted coordinates pointing to the one place on our planet that we can never directly access, never fully observe, never truly understand. What could possibly be at Earth's core that would interest an alien intelligence? Dr. Amir Hassan, a geophysicist from MIT, was the first to break the silence. They know something about our planet that we don't, he said quietly. Something fundamental. Something we've missed because we've been looking outward instead of inward. That statement opened a floodgate of theories, each more unsettling than the last. Was there something artificial at Earth's core? Some ancient technology placed there billions of years ago by a precursor civilization? Were we ourselves the experiment, humanity's entire evolutionary history, orchestrated by intelligences that seeded our planet with life and embedded monitoring systems at its unreachable center? Or was the message a warning, an indication that something dangerous, something catastrophic, was was brewing in the depths beneath our feet. The signal contained additional components that were still struggling to fully decode, mathematical frameworks that seem to describe physics beyond our current understanding, schematic representations of what might be dimensional membranes or universe brain interactions, concepts I've spent my career exploring theoretically, but never expected to see articulated by an alien intelligence. There were also what appeared to be biological diagrams, cellular structures that resembled DNA, but with a complexity that suggested evolutionary processes far beyond anything that's emerged naturally on Earth. And woven throughout the entire message was a sequence that our cryptographers identified as a temporal marker, a countdown if you will. It began at the moment of transmission and appeared to be measuring time towards some future event. Based on our initial analysis, that event is scheduled to occur in approximately 11 years. 11 years until what, we don't know. But whatever 3i Atlas was warning us about, whatever it came to observe, we're running out of time to prepare. The implications sprawl outward in every direction like cracks in a cosmic windshield. If there's something at Earth's core that requires attention from interstellar intelligences, then our entire understanding of our planet's formation, our evolutionary history, perhaps even our consciousness itself needs to be re-examined. What if Earth isn't a random accumulation of stellar debris that happened to fall into the habitable zone of an average star? What if we're infrastructure, a cosmic experiment, a galactic nature preserve? I've spent sleepless nights wrestling with these questions and I can tell you honestly, the uncertainty is almost worse than any definitive answer would be. Because uncertainty means we're operating blind, making decisions about humanity's future without understanding the true parameters of our existence.
The global scientific community is now quietly mobilizing. Deep seismic surveys are being conducted with unprecedented precision, searching for anomalies in Earth's internal structure that might correspond to the coordinates. NASA has fast-tracked several deep space monitoring satellites designed to watch for additional interstellar objects that might be approaching our system, and theoretical physicists like myself are working around the clock to decode the advanced mathematics embedded in the transmission, hoping to understand what cosmological framework these beings operate within. But here's what keeps me awake at night, what gnaws at the edges of my consciousness every time I close my eyes. What if they've already been here? What if 3i Atlas wasn't the first visitor, but merely the first one we managed to detect? Our ability to identify interstellar objects only developed in the last few years. Before that, these visitors could have passed through our solar system unnoticed, conducting whatever observations or interventions they deem necessary while we remained blissfully ignorant. And that countdown embedded in the message, 11 years feels simultaneously like an eternity and like no time at all. Is it a deadline, a warning, an invitation? Are we supposed to do something with this information or were we never meant to decode it in the first place? Perhaps we're observing communications intended for something else, something that resides at Earth's core and has been there all along. I think about consciousness a lot these days. Not just human consciousness, but universal consciousness. The possibility that awareness itself is a fundamental property of the cosmos, woven into the fabric of space-time like gravity or electromagnetism. What if intelligence isn't rare in the universe but inevitable? What if it emerges wherever conditions permit, following laws as immutable as thermodynamics? And what if there are hierarchies of intelligence so vast that the gap between between us and them is greater than the gap between us and bacteria. If such beings exist, and the sophistication of the three IATLAS transmissions strongly suggests they do, then what could they possibly want from us? What value could humanity hold for entities that can cross the interstellar void, that possess mathematics beyond our comprehension, that can build machines capable of precision maneuvering across light years? Perhaps we're not the point at all. Perhaps we're merely the surface phenomenon, the biological scum floating atop something far more significant. Perhaps Earth's true importance has nothing to do with the barely sentient apes that have spent the last few thousand years building civilizations on its crust. Maybe we've been narcissistic in assuming that an alien intelligence visiting our planet would care about us specifically. The coordinates point to the core, not to us. Since the transmission, several other disturbing patterns have emerged. Seismic activity has increased globally by approximately 7%, subtle enough that most people haven't noticed, but significant enough that geophysicists are scrambling to understand why. There have been magnetic field fluctuations that don't correlate with any known solar activity. And perhaps most eerily, there have been isolated reports from deep ocean drilling operations and deep mine facilities of unusual acoustic signatures. Low frequency vibrations that seem to originate from far below, deeper than any human-made excavation has ever reached. Are these connected to the coordinates? To whatever 3 I Atlas was pointing toward? We don't know, but the correlations are troubling enough that multiple governments are now quietly funding research into Earth's deep interior with an urgency usually reserved for weapons development. I want to be clear about something. I'm not trying to frighten you. Fear without information is useless. What I'm trying to do is prepare you for a shift in perspective that I believe is inevitable. We're on the cusp of understanding that our planet, our species, perhaps our entire evolutionary lineage exists within a context far larger and stranger than we ever imagined. We're waking up to find ourselves part of a cosmic ecosystem that operates on principles we're only beginning to glimpse. The universe is not empty, it's not silent. It's teeming with intelligence, with purpose, with agendas that encompass timescales of millions of years and distances measured in parsecs. And somehow, some way, Earth is significant to this larger cosmic drama. The coordinates prove it. What I find most profound is how this discovery reframes every question humanity has ever asked about meaning and purpose. 
For thousands of years, philosophers and theologians have wrestled with our place in the cosmos, seeking to understand why we exist, whether our lives have significance beyond our brief individual experiences. The 3 I Atlas transmission doesn't answer these questions, but it fundamentally alters them. We're no longer asking, are we alone? We're asking, what role have we been assigned in something we don't yet understand? There's a theory gaining traction in classified circles, one that I find both elegant and deeply unsettling. It suggests that Earth might be what's called a nursery world, a planet intentionally designed or selected to incubate complex life and conscious intelligence. The coordinates pointing to the core might indicate where the monitoring system is located, buried beneath kilometers of rock and molten metal where it can operate undisturbed for billions of years. According to this theory, civilizations throughout the galaxy might maintain networks of these nursery worlds, seeding them with life, monitoring their development, and intervening only when absolutely necessary. If this is true, then every major evolutionary leap in Earth's history, the Cambrian explosion, the emergence of photosynthesis, the evolution of multicellular life, the development of human consciousness, might not be accidents of natural selection, but carefully orchestrated developments guided by intelligences we can't perceive from mechanisms we can't access. It's a humbling thought terrifying even, but also strangely beautiful, because it would mean that consciousness, life, intelligence, these aren't cosmic accidents, they're intentions. They're cultivated like gardens across the universe by beings who understand that awareness itself is precious, worth nurturing across galactic timescales. The signal from 3i Atlas included one other element that I haven't mentioned yet. Near the end of the transmission, embedded in a section we've only partially decoded, there appears to be a message directed specifically at human-level intelligences. It's written in a mathematical language sophisticated enough that we almost missed it, hidden within what initially appeared to be random noise. The message, as far as we can translate it, seems to say, you are not ready, but time is short. Look inward, look inward, not outward into the cosmos, but inward, toward the core, toward whatever has been there all along, waiting beneath our feet while we built telescopes to scan the skies. I think about this message constantly. What does it mean to not be ready? Ready for what? Contact, evolution, catastrophe, and how much time is short from the perspective of beings who can traverse interstellar space? A decade, a century, tomorrow? Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings, because I believe, no I know, that the 3 IATLAS transmission is just the beginning. More signals will come, more interstellar visitors will arrive. The cosmic quarantine that has kept us isolated and ignorant is ending, whether we're prepared for it or not. The countdown continues, 11 years and ticking, and somewhere deep beneath our feet, at coordinates we can never physically reach, something waits, something that alien intelligences cross the void to observe, something significant enough that they broke their silence to point it out to us. What's at Earth's core? What have we been living atop all this time, building our civilizations and waging our wars and dreaming our dreams, never suspecting that the real mystery, the real significance, was always beneath us rather than above? I don't have the answer yet, but I'm working on it. We all are. And when we finally understand, when we finally decode the full meaning of those coordinates and that countdown, humanity will face a choice unlike any we've confronted before. A choice about who we are, what we're willing to become, and whether we're ready to acknowledge our place in a cosmos far stranger and more magnificent than we ever dared imagine. So I'll ask you again. Have you noticed anything unusual in your night sky? Have you felt the subtle tremors, the quiet wrongness that's been growing at the edges of our collective awareness? Because if the 3 I Atlas transmission taught us anything, it's that we're not observers of the cosmic drama. We're participants, and our cue is coming. The object didn't slow down. It delivered its message and accelerated away, vanishing into the interstellar dark from which it came. But its transmission remains, burned into our instruments, carved into our consciousness. A set of coordinates, a countdown, a warning or an invitation or perhaps both simultaneously. And the most terrifying, exhilarating, profound question remains. What happens when the countdown reaches zero and we're finally forced to confront whatever lies at the center of our world, waiting in the dark, perhaps aware of us in ways we can't yet fathom? Are we ready to look inward? Are we ready to discover what we've been standing on all along? 